All right, welcome again to Good Choices. It's my catchphrase on this channel. Make sure the audio is good here. There we go. I'm clear in the yellow, kind of in the red, though. This is probably good. So, anyways, we're going to continue on with uh, the L pick. I'm doing my best to make a good choice, but as I've discussed time and time again, uh, <laughs> a lot of that's just up to chance, but I really don't think Linux is going anywhere. Um, so it's it makes sense to get certified in that and then after that to focus on python maybe pick up a, a cloud cert i think that makes a lot more sense uh rather than focusing on like expert level cert ccie uh in it, unless it's in like uh ccie devnet or C something like that juniper devops ccie but as you've seen on this channel, anyone watching who followed me, it's a lot of work to get a CCIE, so um, not nearly as much work. So this this is not nearly as bad, a and the material is great, and it's all free. So with that said, let's uh, not waste any more time and learn about the basics of SED, the stream editor. And I assume this means a text stream editor, but we'll see. Let us take a look at the other files, terms, and utilities that do not have cat in their names. We can do this by passing the dash V option to grep, which instructs the command to output only the command, the lines not containing uh, cat. So dash V match everything except uh, cat. So let's, uh, pull up my home lab and try this out. All right, and here we go. We've got uh, the same uh, commands that they've got there. Most of what we can do with the with grep, we can also do with <coughs> sed sed the stream editor for filtering and transforming text, as stated in the sed manual. Um, so we can take a look at the sed manual quick. Um, although I did I did close my home lab connection. I want to make that sure I leave that open. Okay, so the manual for SED says that SED is a stream editor. A stream editor is used to perform basic text transformations on an input stream, a file, or input from a pipeline. While in some ways similar to an editor, which permits scripted edits, such as ED, SED works by making only one pass over the inputs and is consequently more efficient, but it is SED's ability to filter text in a pipeline which particularly distinguishes it from other types of editors. And I need to look at my calendar quick. All right, I am back. Uh, looks like I closed my lab again. I don't know why I keep uh, closing it. Um, so I'll open it one more time here and hopefully I can keep it open. We'll do a man on the SED again. I don't think I uh, f finished that. So while in some ways similar to an editor, which permits scripted events such as ED, SED works by making only one pass over the inputs and it is consequently more efficient, but it is SED's abil ability to filter text in a pipeline, which particularly distinguishes it from other types of editors. All right, so I'm not going to close that. Oh, you know what? It, there's an error here where there's there's a bug here where I can't see that it that it's open. Okay, that's what's going on. So most of what we can do with grep, we can also do with SED, the stream editor for filtering and transforming text, as stated in the SED manual page. First, we will recover our ftu.txt file by decompressing 
our gzip archive of the file we saw that in the last video um yep they're doing the same method i did before so let's uh follow along with that okay and then lsftu star and there we go now we can use scd to list only the lines containing the string cat so scd dash n cat Okay, that's kind of an interesting syntax. And then we also have a less than sign instead of a greater than sign. So maybe there's a manual page on that less than sign or less than help or something. Uh, no, so I'm not sure what that less than sign is, um, but uh, we can see I got the same result. We have used the less than sign to direct the contents of the file uh, ftu.txt uh, into, uh, this looks like an, an error here, ftu.txt, and then this is listed twice, into our scd command. The word enclosed between slashes, um, and then we have this p here, but uh, the word is cat, is the term we are searching for the dash n option here instructs SED to produce no output unless the ones later instructed by the p command. Try running this same command without the dash n, dash n option to see what happens. Okay, so let's let's try it to see what happens without looking at the example without spoiling it. Okay, so now we got. Um, so it looks like the the dash dash n is well i don't know what the dash n is because not all of these contain cat i was going to say dash n was like the version of um grep without the dash f hold on i need to change my posture here all right there we go back in business so i'm not sure what that um dash n does i see th there's a clear difference it's no longer uh matching on on cat it's it's just uh listing out the whole file now it looks like and that's what we see in the ex do we see that in the example as well I'm not, I'm not sure um no the example is actually different um the example has oh you know what Try running the same command without the dash n option to see what happens. Okay, so so we did that. Uh, and what happened was we got a different result than this next step. We got these bz cats showing up. Um, and they actually show up twice if we do a cat on, on that. Um, so cat, cat on the file, ftu.txt. Uh, bz cat only shows up once. So that's kind of interesting. We've got bz cat just showing up twice and then we've got the next line showing up twice as well so we've got we've got a few so anything with cat in it it looks like shows up twice so xz cat shows up twice z cat shows up twice and uh that's different from the original file where they show up once so it almost looks like it just duplicates the instance of cat anything that that shows up like cat uh, if we do it without the dash n and we do forward slash p uh, it shows up uh, twice there okay next part of the reading then try this and this looks like it's the same thing we did before but instead of there being a forward slash p at the end there's a forward slash d all right so that looks more like what we're looking for with uh, it being the opposite of it, it being the equivalent of grep dash v that we that we did before um i would even uh, gander to say that we got the same results so oh and we don't have that file anymore um but uh looks the same to me if i change it to a dash n uh or if i if i add a dash n then i don't get any results at all but sed as in the example here followed by forward slash cat forward slash d instead of p and with the less than sign which we learned was redirecting 
the other way. So it's redirecting the output of this file into the command that way um, instead of redirecting the output of the command into the file. Uh, it produces the same results in the example and the results are all missing uh, this uh, string here, CAT. If we do not use the dash n option, sed will print everything from the file except for what the d instructs sed to delete from its profile. For sorry, from its output. Okay, so the the d probably uh, selected it to delete this uh, cat. A common usage of sed is to find and replace text within a file. Can't really do that with uh, grep. I was wondering why you would use this ever if you have, and I'm a little bit hot here, I'll turn it down. I was wondering why you would ever use this if you have grep, but uh, it looks like it's got some extra find replace uh, functionality. So a common use of SCD is to find and replace text within a file. Suppose you want to change every occurrence of cat to dog you can use SED to do this by supplying the uh, S option to swap, so S for swap, to swap out each instance of the term cat for the second term dog. And that seems uh, pretty useful to me. Let's try it. Okay, so SED, S for swap, cat, and dog. And then I think we do need that uh, forward slash. I will try it just for the sake of exploration without it. But first, I'm going to verify that it uh, works as suspected. There we go. We've got BZ dog. We just got a straight dog instead of a cat now. So that looks good. Let's see what happens if I miss this last slash. And we've got a syntax error. Um, there's an unterminated S command. So this is the character that terminates the command. And uh, there we go. So let's take a look at some of these other commands I ran. So that's interesting because this D doesn't have a, a, a terminator, terminated command. So, yeah, okay. I, I don't really understand the syntax of SED. Um, so I guess the syntax is SED and then an option and then a script if there's no other script and then input file so yeah that doesn't really clear it up for me that much rather than using a redirection operator pass the ftu.txt file into our scd command we can just have the scd command operate on the file directly we will try that next while simultaneously creating a backup of the original file all right. So sed i dot backup s cat dog ftu dot txt r and then ls ftu star and there's our backup. The dash i option will perform an in place sed operation on your original file. If you do not use the dot backup after the uh, dash i parameter, you would have you would just have written your original file. Whatever you use as text after the dash i parameter will be the name of the original file that will be saved prior to the modifications you asked SED to perform. So I've got a question for the AI because look at this SED dash space dash i dot backup so you know does anyone really want to do that like why not just do ftu.txt after you like the cp command like why not just always why not use the cp command for everything like look at how clean this is you back up this this uh file and then you rename you name the backup this like can't get any easier than that. Uh, and this is not easier. So let's ask the AI about this. Um, so 
So we're going to say, why not just use uh, why over complicate things with a command with difficult syntax to follow, to understand and follow. All right, and the answer. So the answer is still printed out here. It's uh, using the CP command to create a backup file is indeed a valid and straightforward approach to creating a backup. It simplifies the process by directly copying the original file to a backup file with a different name. However, the choice between CP and SED-I.backup depends on the specific requirements and the desired outcome. Here are a few reasons why one, one might choose SED over CP. Okay, first reason is text manipulation. The primary purpose of SED is to manipulate text. If you need to perform specific text substitutions or transformations within a file, using SED can be more efficient and flexible than CP. It allows you to modify the file content without creating an additional copy. Okay, so that's actually, I can think of that being good because let's say you have a version number um, and uh, you want to you want to change the the version number. You can do it just with that one command. You don't have to open a editor to do that. So that's okay. That's kind of making sense. So the next reason is in place modifications. The dash i option in sed allows you to perform in place modifications, meaning the changes are made directly to the original file. This can be useful if you want to update the file without altering its name or location. Um, in, in contrast, CP creates a separate copy, which may not be desired in some cases. Don't really understand that. So the dash I option allows you to perform in place modifications, meaning the changes are made directly to the original file. Okay, so you know, there's more than just backing up the file. There's also making changes to the file, like for example, that version number. Um, so let's say you make your backup using CP and now you want to update the version number of the one that's not backed up. Hey, well, SCD's got you covered. Just use the SCD-I and you can alter the version number in a really quick, convenient way. You can even script it. Um, if you're going to use something like Nano or Vi, uh, scripting that in your bash script will be a lot more difficult. <laughs> Probably not even possible. So this allows you to just make a bash script. Anytime you want to modify something, you can um, back it up and you can change the uh, version number uh, of the new one. You can increment it automatically. All right, so the next one is scripting capabilities, which we talked about. I kind of came to that conclusion on my own. SED is a powerful text processing tool that supports scripting capabilities. If you need to automate a series of text manipulation oper operations or incorporate them into a larger workflow script, script or workflow, SED provides more flexibility and control. That being said, if the sole purpose is to create a simple backup of a file, using CP is a straightforward and reliable option. The decision between CP and SED depends on the specific requirements and the complexity of the desired modifications. There we go. So that was useful to me. Uh, we learned uh, more context about SED and why you would actually want to use it. <laughs> um, it prevents you from having to open a text editor like Vi or, or Nano. And therefore, if you need to make uh, simple file modifications, such as changing the the version, if there's like a version being tracked in it or, or something like that, any contents in the file, that's just a quick and easy change. You don't need to make it more complicated by using a text editor. You can just do it with SED. And additionally, you can script with SED uh, where you could not script uh, by when you would have to open a uh, text editor. Okay, so the dash I option will perform an in-place SED operation on your original file. If you do not use the dot backup after the dash I parameter, you would just have written to your original file Whatever you use as text after the dash i parameter will be the name 
the original file will be saved to prior to the modifications you asked SED to perform. The other the other thing that's like important to to to, to differentiate is this idea of original of an original file. That's important. So when you create, you know, when you when you do version tracking in in Git, it it can get really messy and sloppy once you start making copies of your file. So, you know, that tracking, that history of changes of your file can be preserved using SED because you're you're only doing things to your original file. So you're creating that backup and then when you actually go and substitute cat for dog, you do that in your original file, which if you're using git commits and, and version control, whatever, whatever you're using, it will maintain that record of changes you made before you did that swap. And, and your backup um, is is not going to have that record, um, you know. So, it it's a better way of doing version control to um, have your original file be altered in a contiguous way, and you you can do that with uh, SED. All right. So continuing data integrity. We have demonstrated how easy it is to manipulate files in Linux. There are times where you may wish to distribute a file to someone else, and you want to be sure that the recipient ends up with a true copy of the original file. Yep, and, and as we discussed, we're one step ahead of the documentation. A very common uh, usage of this technique is practiced when Linux distribution servers host downloadable CD or DVD images of their software along with the files that contain calculated checksum values of those disk images. Here is an example listing from a Debian download mirror. So that's a good point too. Let's say that uh, you're, you're like, for example, in my GNS lab, I have these checksums that verify that my OSs that I upload to it are uh, valid. You know, if I were to copy it or like do something like that, or in some way not interact with the original files, that checksum might change and it might be seen as valid. But if I take care to preserve the original file, and like every aspect of it, then those uh, checksum values are going to uh, remain unchanged and it won't be deemed a imposter file. All right, so from the listing above, the Debian installer image files are accompanied by text files that contain checksums of the files from the various algorithms, FD5, SHA1, SHA256, and SHA512. Note, a checksum is a value derived from a mathematical computation based on a cryptographic hash function against a file. There are different types of cryptographic hash functions that vary in strength. The exam, okay, here we go, <laughs> will expect you to be familiar with using MD5SUM, SHA256SUM, and SHA512SUM. So they'll be going into it here. I don't need to do it before we get to it in the learning material. All right, next section. Once you download a file, for example, the Debian uh, ISO image, you would then compare the checksum of the file that was downloaded against a checksum value that was provided for you. Here is an example to illustrate the point. We will calculate the SHA-256, SHA-256 value of the FTU.txt uh, file using the SHA-256 sum command. All right, so let's follow along with that. So SHA-256 sum FTU.txt, and there we go. The long string of characters preceding the file name is the SHA-256 checksum value of this text file. Let us create a file that contains that value. 
so that we can use it to verify the integrity of our original text file. We can do this with the same SHA-256 sum command and redirect the output to a file. Okay, so here's the uh, checksum here. Uh, let's get that again. Okay, so every time we do that, we're going to get the same value because we're taking the uh, checksum value of this file and, and returning it in the where we're producing a SHA-256 hash based on the uh, bytes in this file based on based on this file so we get the same result every time because uh, we didn't change the file um, if we were to make a, a change to the file uh, we would get a different hash uh, I'll do that just to drive the point home but it seems like I'm kind of maybe de maybe uh, but uh, yeah it's, it's easy enough to do uh, we can see now we've got a different checksum so I'll uh, delete that change all right and then I'll go back now it might be the case okay yeah we've got the original checksum back um, okay great so uh, the uh, so we did we did that so now to verify the ftu.txt file we just use the same command and supply the file name that contains our checksum value along with the dash c switch so we need to know what kind of uh, checksum it is uh, it's a 256 uh, checksum uh, oh did I not I, I didn't do that step okay so I'll do that step now uh, there we go redirect the output so SHA-256 carefully uh, named so that we know what kind of checksum it is there we go and uh, the next step will be to verify it Okay, so we didn't have to pass it the ftu.txt file, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, I think that's because, yeah, so we have, we have, this consists of the checksum and the file. So it looks at the, it knows which file to look at because it's it's in this uh, file here. The sha256.txt lists the ftu.txt file. All right, so the value contained within the file matches the calculated SHA-256 checksum for our ftu.txt file, just as we would expect. However, if the original file were modified, such as a few bytes lost during a file download, or someone had deliberately tampered with it, the value check would fail. In such cases, we know that our file is bad or corrupt, and we cannot trust the integrity of its contents. To prove the point, we will add some text to the end of the file. Alright. New entry. Then we're going to do uh, two greater than signs so that we append. We don't uh, blow away what's in the file already. Alright, now we will make an attempt to verify the file's integrity. So SHA-256 sum dash C for the uh, the, the cipher that we're going to give it, uh, which is in this file, SHA-256.txt. And uh, there we go. Uh, FTU.txt failed. Uh, warning, one computed checksum did not match. And we see that the checksum does not match what was expected for the file. Therefore, we could not trust the integrity of this file we could attempt to download a new copy of the file, report the failure of the checksum to the sender of the file, or report it to a data center security team depending on the importance of the file. Okay, so looking deeper into files is the next section. I just want to try one more thing here. Um, dive deeper, that's kind of one of the things I like to do on this channel. So uh, we've got this backup file here, ftu.txt.backup. And that's the same, that's just a backup file. So it's the same file as uh, this TXE, except for it's got a new entry in it. I'll, I'll delete that. Uh, 
Okay, and then I want the uh, checksum uh, to, to pass again, so I'll run that again. There we go. So now the file's uh, back to normal. Uh, so what I want to see is, does this backup file produce the same checksum as the uh, original file? So to do that, uh, I all I need to do is SHA-256 sum um, to see the uh, original and now I'm going to run the same command to see the backup. There we go and it does not. It's a different um, checksum. We did that with SED. So where I'm really curious, I want to do a um, copy ftu.txt to ftu.txt dot backup to and now I want to see ah okay that's interesting so yeah you know here's here's where it can get confusing is when you use that copy command you know it, it exactly copies this you know with the same revision history and everything and maybe you don't want that because it's just a backup file so why why would you want this long you know, multi-day, week, month, year history on your backup file. Like, you just preserve it in your original file, and your backup file is just the backup. So, uh, you, you don't you don't have to have it that way if you use the SED because it creates another file with another checksum, and it preserves the original file with its original checksum. If you use CP. Now you create another file, which is an exact copy. So you create two original files with the same checksum. And that could make uh, things like version control behave differently than you would expect. So that's just something to know from my own experience. Uh, these checksums uh, are, are really important because they can tell you which file is which. And when you're using uh, version control, uh, sometimes it, it's hard to tell how how the version control will act if you have copies of files that have the same uh, checksum. And then sometimes they'll do things that, that you kind of don't want, like maintain if it's just a backup file and maintains a, a long list of hundreds of commits and, and you just want the backup, you don't want to have that whole history. Uh, you just want that history for the original file. Um, so, yep, uh, hopefully that uh, makes sense. So the next uh, section is looking deeper into files. Uh, I'm going to 